Unity can be very frustrating starting out. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is walk through making a super duper awesome and super simple text-based video game. It's a really great way to introduce yourself to Unity. So it's a perfect first project. If you've never used Unity, you've never made a game. Also, it has a few more advanced concepts. So if you made the basics, this can help you further your knowledge as well. It will be straightforward. All of my code that I do is going to be linked in the description. I'm going to first show you what my end product here is. Again, a real simple text-based game just to get some concepts across. I named mine Shipwreck. You name yours whatever you want. And then my start here, where am I? Is this a beach? Oh, the storm. Where is the boat? I can, you can see where this is going. I should take a look around. So I'm going to go ahead and start my game. Play. And at this point, okay, where am I? A beach? Should I go left to look for my boat or right and look for a settlement? Use the arrow keys. Let's say, let's go look for my boat. So I'm going to go left to look for my boat. My ship. Great. Oh, and then, by the way, I pressed the left arrow key. Should I, uh, oh, looted it. Oh, someone looted it. Should I go right and look for the thief or left and head back to the beach? Um, I'm going to hit right to look for the thief. A settlement. Here come the villagers. Game over. The villagers killed you. Should your ghost go back to the beach or left? And it's going to be similar or the same controls now. Because there's only going to be three separate um, states. Of course, you can make as many different levels, as, little, as many different areas as you would like. I'm going to show you the basics and let you kind of go wild with it. So... That being said, let's get started on ours now. I'm going to get rid of this guy. And I've already loaded up Unity here. I'm going to click on New. And New Project. Let's call this um, Text Game Creative. Uh, it is 2D. <laughs> Oops, 2D. That is fine. Yep, yep. Okay, create. Whoa, so mine loaded very strangely. I'm not really sure what's going on here. I'm just going to go over here to layout and hit default. There we are. So if yours looks a bit different than mine does, just go to layout and default. And that sets us ready to go. All right. Let's go ahead and build out the body of the game, right? The visual stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start with sample scene. I'm going to click, oops, where do we get to? Up oh, scenes, sample scene. I don't want sample scene. I'm going to rename it. I'm just going to name mine home because it's my home scene. But ah, all right. And main camera, that is fine. We need to add a canvas element. A canvas element is exactly what you think it is. Um, it allows, it's a place where you can put and paint and see other things. I just right clicked and I'm going to go down here to UI and in UI way down here is canvas. All right. And we have that pop up and event systems. Perfect. Exactly what we wanted. Now we need a few things for our canvas. With our canvas, we're going to right click on canvas. I'm going to go to UI and I'm going to select text. Okay. I'm also, well, with text, let's go ahead and make this text our title text. So to do that, we are going to just, I'm going to name it title text. And the title of my game, honestly, I'm still going to make a ship. Ooh, maybe I'll make a space game with a similar theme. Space wreck and I'm gonna spell it like you would shipwreck I know I know creative all right so there's the title of my game and you might say wait a minute I can't see it that is correct so we need to change a few things here the font size uh, let's try 150 okay uh, normal that is good and this let's go ahead and find where this thing is there we are I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out so I need to, I made it huge and it's turned, I'm going to truncate it. I'm going to make it overflow and I'm going to pull it to size. Okay. So that will be the name of my game. I might just put it up in the corner this time. 
Um, nah, I'll stick to what I did before. So let's go ahead and droop and. 125 for that is perfect. Keep that at half. I have an overflow off the edge, center and center. Okay. And then I want the text to be actually white, which is F, 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 six of them. And that will give us some white text here. Great. All right. Now I'm going to go back to canvas and right click and click UI. I need more text. And this is going to be the story of the game. So I'm just going to say story text for the title. And then uh, whatever intro story stuff you need. For mine, I put where am I? Is this a moon? Because I'm not on the beach anymore because I'm in space. Ooh, maybe I should say a moon beach. Hey, uh, where is my ship? I should take a look around. And again, this is only the text the user is going to see before they are playing your game. Okay, so there's that, and it's tiny over here. I'm going to quacha. And I think I had around 40. And wrap, wrap. I mean, center, center, wrap. And then I'm going to turn the text to be white here, too. I could just drag it up here this time. Oh, maybe I had it at 50. That's looking better. All right. And now I want to get some colored background. So first I'm going to do main camera. Okay. And for main camera, that's going to cover all of this space. So for main camera, what we're going to want to do is click here. Right. And I'm going to pick a different color. You pick whatever you want. I'm just going to go Mm, you know, I might stick to my colors. So I'm going to stick to the colors I had, and that should be 9A, 8, 3 for my background. Let's go ahead and click that. All right, now that's the background color. And if you don't see it, I'm going to grab game, and I'm going to pull it over here. And, oop. I'm going to change this. We don't want it free. We're going to do 16 by 9. Okay. And then we're going to have to go over here and change this up. I'm hitting Alt to move. And now I need all this to fit back in. Ah. So we're just going to move all this in with the adjusted space. Quick recalibration here. There we are. And there we go. Back to all that fitting. All right. So let's keep going. So what I'm going to do to fix this, right? Instead of doing 16 by 9, just to make it easier on us, we're going to do a solid one. I have 1920, uh, 1920 by 1080, right? 1920 by 1080. If you don't see that, just click on the little plus. And that should make it so it's a solid size. The camera's way down there. We don't really need to worry about that right now. And now I'm going to go ahead and... Now let's go ahead and take a look in game mode. Ooh, it looks really zoomed out. Do you see this free aspect ratio? We're actually going to change that. I'm going to do six, uh, 1920 by one... Uh, 1080. If you don't see this, you just want to hit the plus. So put ah, that will keep it a stable state. I'm dragging game over here and dropping it. And so that way, this will change with this and not have it kind of shoot around within the space. Let me zoom out a little bit over here. Awesome. All right. So we have a background color, we have some text, and I might want to move this some now that I have it aspect ratio changed up. Drag that over here. Down there, I'm going to increase this to 150 maybe, and then I'm going to grab this, right like that, and increase that to uh, 65. Sure. Centered and centered. Okay. I'm going to now add, I'm going to go to canvas, right click, UI, 
I'm going to add an image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, whoops, control Z. I didn't mean to do that. Let's zoom in on it. Ah, I'm not meaning to do that either. Oh, let me just grab the moving tool and move this over here. And then let's change the size of it with this. And you can also hit W, E, R, and so on to change this stuff up. So I'm just gonna grab this and we're gonna totally cover it. And this is just giving it that background. And we can pick a color for our background. Mine was, mine was, I think, let's see what I had. I had a maroonish color like that, 61B17 for hex. And I'm gonna drag this that says image. Oh, let's change this to be the story background. And I'm gonna drag it up here. There we are. Okay, because what gets drawn first is what is at top. This is drawn next, then story text. Could even do it like that. Now I want a background for the title. So UI image, there we are. And I'm gonna grab my moving tool. We're gonna send it over here, up, and over, let's zoom in some. I'm gonna hit T to change the size of it. And I like it to overlap some, so something like this would be great. And now I wanna change up the color. My color was, let me see, here we are, 25, 45, 67, I think, a bluish color. Okay, I'm gonna hit enter, there we are. And let's change this to say title, whoops, title background, great. And I'm gonna pull it up here. Guess that will come first, there we are. And that looks good, I'm gonna move this down some to here. And oh, I actually want the title background to overlap the story's text area. And I'm gonna make some small adjustments such as I want all of these up some more. So story background, I'm gonna move up some. Might even increase the size of this one. That some. There we are. Okay, so we got the basics of the tech stuff. We got it all labeled and ready to go. So now we can start adding some of the other elements. For instance, I'm gonna be go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and add a C file. Okay, so I'm gonna right click and do create, and it's gonna be a C script. And what I'm gonna name this is main game. And it's gonna go ahead and load in Visual Studio, which will just pop up in there. Oh, nope, now we gotta open it in Visual. There we go. This is gonna be one of the files we use, and I'm gonna go ahead and make the other file. I'm gonna right click, create, C plus, or C sharp script, and this is gonna be a state file. Uh, we will have multiple states in this game and be switching between them. So now I'm gonna open that in Visual Studio. Awesome, all right, so here we are. And we're gonna be using this to be the areas of our game, the different um, places in the game, maybe the different rooms in your game, something of that nature. So this looks great, class state. We do wanna create an asset menu. And to do that, we're gonna do bracket, create asset menu, I'm just gonna hit tab. And then we wanna set a menu name, and I'm gonna set that equal to state. And an asset menu is going to be shown within our elements. Um, and you'll see what I mean. When we click on them over here, it will pop, or down here, they pop up. All right, so there we are. That looks good. Menu name. Oh, I closed that too soon. There we are. Perfect. And then, let me hit enter here. We need a few variables, all right? We are going to be serializing these variables. Serialize field is what you want to have occur. 
And you might be wondering what serialized field is. It's slightly complicated. Um, it is allowing uh, the, allowing you to take a peek at a private variable while keeping it protected. Um, it takes the variable's data, it serializes it, and takes it into the RAM and stores a copy of it uh, for safety on the drive as well. That being said, I'm going to do string game text. So I'm declaring a serialized field. It is a string and I'm calling it game text. And then I'm going to do another serialized field. Oops. Yikes. Serialized field, square bracket. And then this is going to be of our own making state and other states. And yes, this is going to be an array of what of our class, right? Uh, it's an array of our class state, which we're creating here. And we're creating an array of those states. And we're going to use this to cycle through those states um, when the user makes a selection by clicking an arrow key. Okay. Now on start, what do we want this class to be able to do? Well, we don't need a get start. We're going to have a, well, a start, we're going to have a get state text so let's get the text from the state and we're gonna what we're gonna be getting there is the game text return game text is what we'll want to do and here void update we're not gonna need this at all uh, what did I do here Oops, I need to change this over. Public string. There we are. And this is not going to be a void either, so we might as well public. And this is where we're going to use our state array and then get other states. Okay. And inside of this, all we're going to do is go ahead and return those other states. And these, um, this array is going to be partially constructed or fully constructed, I guess, uh, within Unity itself. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to hit save on this. And let's say I'll go ahead and head to main game. And now with main game, what we're going to be doing is first way up here, we need to add using Unity engine.ui. Uh, okay, we need to add that library, make sure you do that. And now we're going to use some variables again and serialize field is what we need here i'm gonna have a text element and i call it text element okay and then we're going to use another serialized field there we are and then i'm going to declare a new state and this one's just going to be our starting state so i creatively say start state okay and this will be declared in the game itself and state state okay so then we're gonna go ahead and declare another an extra state and i just named it well state all right void start now start's gonna be start is called when before the first frame update right so kind of when the user hits play you could think and state is going to be equal to the starting state at the start of the game so we're going to go ahead and set that state to be equal to start state equals ah I know what we're saying here all right I'm gonna go ahead though and text element dot text is going to be equal to state dot get state text <laughs> so let's pause there it's grumpy about start state right so we're saying state start state it's not sure what we will be talking about. Let's go back to here and we need to add a, I'm going to right click and create empty and you're going to get a game object. I'm going to right click on that and well, oh, I can rename it here and I'm just going to call it game. And now I'm going to hit add component and I want to look for our script here, which is main game. Let's go ahead and add that. So it will be available to us. Okay, let me go ahead and switch back to my code, which is here. All right. 
So I'm now going to use update, but before I do, well, I know what I'm going to use update for, but I need to write the function first. So we're going to recreate a function. Um, let's do private void. Oh, I don't like, ah, need it within here. There we go. And It's going to be used to respond to the user input, to the user pressing keys. And we're going to have it run called by the update function. So private void game uh, yeah, game main. I'm probably using that too much, but oh well. All right, game main. And what it's going to do, let's see, let's make a state array states. All right, and again, these states are going to be like our areas in the game, the different places, the different turns the user takes, maybe the rooms, whatever you want to call that. Get other states, and this is the stuff we declared in the states class. So we're going to get other states from the state. Those other states will be the left and right uh, options for the user, and we're going to make them into an array. Using that array, we then check if the user touched a key. So if input dot get key down we're just going to use i'm going to hit tab to autofill that and the key code for it dot left i use left arrow you can use whatever you want maybe use one two three for options just make sure you inform the user of what the appropriate method of input is okay if and then so if key down left i'm going to have state zero of my array states array always be the left arrow option so state equals states array and i'm making state equals states array zero because state is what we're going to be switching to next so no matter what we'll switch to that we want to change what that is equal to depending on what the user pressed so now i'm writing else if git key down key code dot right arrow okay and some brackets here and state will be equal to states array one. Okay. That is looking, whoops, that is looking uh, good. And so we do want one line below it. And that is to go ahead and do text element dot text. So the text element of this object is going to be equal to whatever the text state get state text is. We're going to grab the text from the state and shove it into the object. What object will that be? That object will be our story text. Okay. And then we need to make sure to run this uh, inside update, which is run once per frame. I'm going to run game, main, boom. All right. So let me save all this. Save. Oops. Save. Okay. And let's go check out what this looks like. Now that we've done all that code and stuff, what I'm first going to do, honestly, I'm going to hit file, save, file, save project. And that is because, well, one, to be cautious, two, we're going to end up going to game here. If your game does not have state slots that you're going to see in a second, if it's missing them, it can take several seconds for them to show up. All right. So now within... um unity let's go back to the game actually and notice that i have text element perfect and start start oh that is a problem let's fix that real quick start ah and that's what's going on here i wrote start start i want start state because this is going to be the starting state go ahead and oop, not that hit save here there we are okay and hopefully let me just have this reload start state so what we're going to do there is, well, what text element do we want to have change? This we are able to just grab. I'm going to have the story text and I'm going to pull it way over here and just drop it in. And then our starting state, well, that we haven't created yet. I'm going to right click down here and hopefully if I go to create, ta-da, here is a state object, okay? And I'm going to call this first one, well, since it's the starting one, start or beginning, or whatever you would like. And there we are. So I have a starting state. And that is what I'm going to put here. I'm going to drag it over and drop it there. Okay. 
So what should we put in our starting state? Well, this is what we created. Game text is what we did. Other states, this is the size of the array. Each is going to be two because we have the two options, if you remember, in main game of left and right. And here's our array, zero and one, because they're going to have options on um, where to go and how to interact while they're interacting with the game. Okay. And then the text, the text element field, we're creating right here. And this is the state. All right. So let's go ahead. Ooh, the text element field for me, I should spell. The text element field is for game, right? Text element is here. And that's from this. The text for the state is within the state code itself. Okay. So what do I want to say at the start of my game? And this is kind of up to you. Hmm. How should I start mine? I'm gonna, so where am I? I'll probably say something similar to this. Hmm. Uh, hmm. A beach on a moon. Creative, I know. All right. And then should I go left to look for my ship or right and look or a, you know, one of those famous moon settlements or right and look for a settlement. Perfect. Okay. Well, that would mean left and right because we're going to be using the arrow keys, but I'm going to want to have two more states. So let me go ahead and do that now. Create state. And then I'm going to name it right away and always make sure to name it right away. Otherwise things get a bit messy with naming. You can trust me on that. Um, so I'm going to call this one ship, right? Because that will be when I find my ship. And then I'll call this one create state settlement. And that would be a settlement I find. Hey, they all start with S. Um, all right. So ship, what should I say for this? Well, hmm. uh, my ship, because my hero will find it. Great. Oh. Someone looted it. Looted it. Bum, bum, bum. Should I go right and look for the thief or left to head back to the beach? Okay. And that will be that. And then I'm going to want this to be two like before. And actually now, let's see, I said, uh, head back to the beach. So left to head back to the beach. And let's just double check. Okay. So the left arrow is going to pull up zero. So the first item in our array. So if left is headed back to the beach for the ship, well, the beach was our starting point. It's where we just randomly ended up somehow away from our ship. So I'm going to drop beach here, the starting one here, which is the beach, or I could go right and look for a settlement and the right arrow key is going to pull up the second element in the array or the index of one. Great, great and great. Let's try the settlement one now for me. And of course you might've named all of yours different. That would make sense. It's your game. Okay. And Ooh, another time I have to be creative. All right. So this, we're looking for a settlement. I'm going to say a settlement, but ah, here come the villagers game over. They weren't friendly. The villagers killed you. Should your ghost go right? Should go right to get back to the beach or left to your ship. Okay, that might be a bit long. We will see. And I'm going to leave it as a ghost because I'm not going to have a game over since we're just kind of learning this. And of course, your story might be much longer and more intricate. This is demoing it and letting you kind of figure out what and uh, where you would like to take it. So now I need an array of two. Okay. 
And I said, the left to your ship. And so left to the ship, that would be, whoops, settlement left to the ship is going to be the first element spot, right? Because I made this a two. And so that means right would be back to the beach, hopefully. Yes. Uh, which is my starting point. Now my starting point, let me make sure I fix this array size. And I'm going to set that up as two as well. And let's see, uh, right for the settlement. So that would be the index of one element one for the settlement. I'm going to pull that over. You can also just click here to select and ship. Okay. There we are. So those all look good. So I'm going to make sure to go ahead and hit file and save and then file and save project. So that should be ready to rock. And I'm going to go ahead then and hit uh, play. Let's test it. Okay. Oh, and yep, our starting text disappeared because that's hard coded into the story text. So that's just to see before we actually dive into the game. And here's our first state. Where am I? Where am I in beach on? So forgive the grammar. I should fix that. Uh, should I go left for my ship? And yes, I'm going to go left and look for the ship. Oh, and there we go. The next state pops up my ship. Great. Oh, someone looted it. Should I go right and look for the thief or left back to the beach? I'm going to go ahead and go right. A settlement. Here come the villagers. Game over. The villagers killed you. Should you uh, should your ghost go right to get back to the beach or left for the ship? I'm going to hit right, and here we are on the beach again. So, ta-da! And again, we could make as many states or even as many options as you would like, right? Um, and for, for a greater amount of options, what you can do is instead of limiting yourself to the arrow keys, like right arrow, you could use the number, or well, numbers, like alpha zero, alpha one, so on and so forth. Um, and alpha does give you the numeric numbers um, on your keyboard. I'm going to go back to my right arrow because that is what I liked. All right, so that is looking good. You can also do some styling of this, of the text and things of that nature. I do have a video on how to make some awesome fonts and things like that. I'll link that in the description. And again, all of this code is in the description. If you're still watching this, you should definitely hit like. You should hit subscribe. Uh, gives me warm fuzzies, butterfly wings, makes world peace, all that good stuff. I would uh, appreciate it. And if you build something cool, you should definitely uh, tell me in the comments below.